Future trading involves risk and is not suitable for all investors. Content provided in this segment is meant for educational purposes and is not a solicitation to buy or sell commodities. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Tech Talk with myself, Cody Coster, and Mr. Andy Fallman. Uh, it is the 13th of May, and markets are moving, Andy. We got uh, quite the you know different charts to look at today. Mm-hmm. Corn and beans heading lower. Class three looks like it's heading a little higher. Uh, but the one that we want to start out first with was gelatinous butter. Gelatinous butter, that's right. Good morning, Cody. How are you? I'm doing well, man. How are you? I'm doing all right. Thanks Good. for having me. Um, so, yeah, gelatinous butter, you know, we saw that Section 32 purchase, what was that, Wednesday afternoon? Or yeah. no, Tuesday afternoon. Um, it, uh, you know, we, it, it seemed to move that market quite a bit, and it was after hours, so futures rallied, and then we fell back down because it, it was post 115 central when so when we settled. So that's why you have the second candle right here. You have that wick there, but it's not really indicative of the trade, right? It just it was announced after hours, and futures reacted. But what's interesting about this is I'll start with you had this. We've made a higher low, and maybe that is because of the section 32 purchase, but it is what it is, right? So price action is price action, and what we're seeing is um, I think, again, a higher low here, and you've got a nice kind of breakaway gap that's starting to take shape here and here, right? And, you know, we've been talking about butter, you know, fundamentally with, with you know, restaurants starting to reopen with how much butter we actually use in a restaurant. I believe it's close to 55% of the country's production gets used in restaurants. Um, obviously, government spending, you know, it was a big load. Of, it was a 13.3 million pounds of butter was announced in that Section 32 purchase. It's, it's, it's a lot of butter. Correct. Um, so but chart wise, like I said, higher lows, you're starting to gap here and, and you're maintaining that. Right. So I think the next stop is right in here. Right. And what would that price be? Let's just take a quick look. Call it. Uh, it? Yeah. 196, 197. It's not that far away. It's no. what a nickel six cents. Right. So we can we can make that up by the end of the week. We do that. Then I think the next step is to get over this. And, you know, what if we if we are able to do that? then, you know, I'd say we're going to start to see, you know, like it's almost like wave one begins where now we're in an uptrend. Cause I don't, I don't necessarily think you're in an uptrend yet. You're starting to have the makings of it, but these higher lows, and you know, you're starting to approach some of these areas we haven't seen in a while. And, and, and like I said, you know, if we can get over two bucks, 203, 204 type settlement in this pack, then I think it's just turns into a nice steady uptrend where we go from there. It's a good question, but um, I think this is the next step. This, this gap right here, we could fill it then getting over this price right here and it certainly feels like the fundamentals are there to do it well and like you said maybe it was because of the section 32 announcement but on you know midweek this week earlier in the week um like tuesday afternoon you are correct tuesday afternoon that announcement came out mm-hmm. this chart has turned around i know last week i think it was last week maybe two weeks ago we were talking about butter kind of heading its way back down to 170 ish type right. range and but as you pointed out, I mean, this thing is is really turned around on a dime and really and, started to, to gap. Yeah. And if you just kind of zero in on, you know, the, 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 the trade prior to the, the Section 32 announcement, too. Right. I mean, this was this trade right here. It doesn't look like much, but it's a it's a clear indication that the market's not ready to put in or go test this 180 number. Right. Because it, right. it looked like it was getting ready to. Right. If you just if you just take away. All that trade or the trade afterward right that chart unto itself doesn't look good but then you had four sessions after the fact that basically rejected this and then you had a nice fundamental you know kind of injection in the marketplace that has since been able to hold right it's 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 yeah you, you had a, you could say well the market rallied because of section 32 purchase but it rallied it's also staying there so you're seeing trade and it's moving so you know that may have been the catalyst for these gaps but you know the market's also going to show that it may prove that it's those gaps were warranted and we can keep going so it's that's where I think we end up going is filling this gap and then testing this high. Okay. So yeah, look out to a lot of these butter. Um, next one. Switching gears a little bit. Yeah, this one's had a quite the up and down lately, huh? Yeah. Um, let me just pull this up. This is weekly cheese. So we have had this gap up there for how long? Some time now, right? We've been talking about it for a long time. We've been talking about it, I know, since this candle, right? Yeah. Right there, which is the beginning of the year. So what sticks out to me here right now is it seems like any time this market over the last call it, you know, three months or so has tried to break. Let's just kind of zero in on some of this, this trade here, here, here. And then what looks like right here as well. Anytime it's tried to break, 
it, the, the buyers have stepped in and are willing to own it at is a higher price. So kind of what we just saw with July Deeks Butter, it's a higher low right here and then potentially right here, right? So you had this candle last week, it's not looking so hot and buyers took full advantage of it and took the market right back up. So, you know, you keep bumping up against this. We have this line drawn around 181, you know, just the easy math to say we get a 183 type settle. You keep bumping up against this again and again, but you keep making these higher lows that is, in my opinion, the market winding up to break out to the upside. You know, you're putting in higher lows while you're remaining stagnant against a flat price. You can only do that for so long. And, you know, it, it, typically because of the higher lows that keep getting put in, it's typically a bullish indicator. So, but to and, go test that gap at, at 230, there's going to have to be a settlement here sometime above 180, right? Like that's what we've been waiting for. Definitely. We've, we've knocked against that line how many times? I mean, would you say a settle of, even if it's like 181, 182, that's gotta be a healthy indicator that we're probably gonna go test that gap yeah. sooner rather than later. So here's the settlement of 182, right? And this previous one, the high was, I believe 182 as well. And this one as well. So you've had one, two, three, you know, stabs at it, right? Mm -hmm. I think like a 183 to 184 plus settlement on the weekly average can propel this market higher. Okay. And I think you got to, we got to clear this trade, but it, once you do, you've, you've left a lot of, you know, selling behind, you've left a lot of trade behind. Futures are telling us that we're going to do that, right? I mean, when you look out forward, you know, like August is trading at 192, SAP is at 193. We're put in, uh, I believe, if, not, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> we put in new contract highs yesterday, July to these. Yes. So the, so the futures market is telling us that there's more upside here that we are going to break out. And I think if we do, like I said, this gap, becomes a magnet. So we've had this on here since the beginning of the year. Don't want to lose sight of this gap. This one's scary. Absolutely. We, we um, seem to hit on this chart every two weeks and by the next two weeks, Tech Talk comes around. If we're not above 184, we're gonna have to- We'll change. see. You know, I, I think we will be, but we'll see. You know, but yeah. it's like I said, it's a price we all want to be, you know, very mindful of, you know, once, because we just, like I said, we haven't been able to get through it. And what's interesting too is that you know you're looking at class three and it's you're seeing twenty dollar handles in some of these trades. Wow, it's twenty dollar milk. But you know this year's a lot different. It's not necessarily you know cheese has helped, but Waze had a big piece of that as well. So yeah. I look at I look at it and say you know it's it's not don't look at twenty dollar milk and say well you know shoot how can we go higher? We're already at twenty bucks. Well, I mean that's also pricing and in some cases sixty six way. Yeah. This time last year we we're in the low mid to mid thirties plus or minus you know, a couple cents every now and again. That was it. It was all because of cheese that we moved, but cheese has room to go. You know, it's, we're sitting at a dollar seventy-eight, and you know, another six cents higher on average, and a close there too. I think that's important. We got to get a close there at the end of the week, and I think it's we can we can we can go test this price. We'll be on our way. Absolutely. So, so um, next chart. Next chart actually came from someone internal. Uh, mm -hmm. Ryan wanted us to look at the spoos and to prove that we are not a one-trick pony. That's exactly what we're going to do. One trick pony. That's right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, like, it, I, I just only you know saw the news this morning. Um, you know, some some weakness in the in the stock market predicated potentially on inflationary you know things and I mean, things regarding inflation. Right. I think we're seeing that in commodities. I think we'll continue to see it. Um, but you know, you pointed out already today, and we we threw this on here per year request, Cody. The 55 day moving average. Look where we are. You're sitting right on. Right on it. Right on it. So, yeah, it, it you know the spoon is still in an uptrend. You know we drew this prior, you know, and it's and it's been chugging along nicely, right? It's had some hiccups along the way, and you know you've retraced all those and just continued to, you know, it hasn't just been a straight shot higher. It's been a nice grind higher. This is a healthy uptrend, and yeah, we're starting to roll over a little bit. But this prior to that, you still had room to go, right? Because we saw that earlier in the, uh, earlier in the year, and so it, you know I think uh, I think what you need to do is. You know, these these big moving averages that we've seen in the past, I think, you know, like the 200 day moving average is also another one that people look at. Right. Um, I think you need I believe those are some of those those are moving averages that a lot of the trade looks at as well. Um, so let's actually add in the 200 day real fast. 200 day apply. So, yeah, that's the 200 day down here. So a lot of room. Um, and some of these moving averages, when you start talking about like, you know, violating them, I think the first step is getting through the 55 day and this downtrend, or excuse me, this uptrend. Getting through that, a close, you know, kind of like a bar like this. Then I think you start to really, you know, start to question the uptrend a little bit. 
Okay. But this is, I mean, like I said, it's this, this to me looks more like it has the makings of this. Yeah. Right here, right? Where you retrace, come back, and all of a sudden you're you're trading back above this high, which was what, 41 and a half roughly. And then all of a sudden you're you know, you're you're chugging like right back along the upside. So it's close. I don't think you can call it a reversal yet, though. We need the actual settle below to be considered technically a reversal, yeah. correct? I think you need to get below this moving average as well as this this long term trend. I mean, look at how long this trend is held. Yeah. So you know, you need to get through both. But if we do, um, I, hey, look out and you know, kind of what we we may be seeing in corn right now. What's the expression, Cody? The Ooh. you know the bulls tend to walk up the stairs, the bears jump out the window. It's quite a bit of jumping out the window this morning, it looks like. Jeez, how about it, huh? Um, and now this, we, so we always look at corn on a daily or monthly, but you want to look at it on a weekly, which is what yeah. you have. So I want to expand this a little bit so you guys can see. So you had three big candles right here, right? And and you know you could call it unsustainable price action. You know, that's this is just big movement. This is just big moves over over the course of a relatively short amount of time. I mean, corn in three weeks went from six bucks to what is this high right here? Okay, so that high was 775. This is a weekly, so it's gonna take the front month. Um, but I still think this chart makes sense to show because what we're seeing is trade beneath the previous day or the previous week's open. Mm -hmm. And that is just not a healthy thing for this uptrend. If you could stick this close for the week and then open the next week lower than the previous week's close. So, you know, let's say we're trading here or lower by tomorrow afternoon, right? So we will have closed beneath previous week's open. And then, okay. and then Sunday, what, so then Sunday night, Monday morning, we open up lower than Friday's close. That is, that's a sign of weakness. That's a sign of real weakness. And when I say real weakness, I mean taking it back down in here. So to give everybody a little bit of a number, the the close below <laughs> last that would be yeah. So on this chart, it's seven. The open was seven forty. Seven forty. Yeah, and if so we, we settle look, below this week, if you're thinking if we settle below, I'm looking at the bottom of that week seven twenty four. Well, no, I'm sorry. We come back to test like the six fifty type. So this oh. This open was 740. The low was 724. So that's that wick, right? But the open, yeah. I'm talking about the open, 740. Okay. Which we are already through that, right? So it's just a question of do we get a close on the week through that price, right? That's what I, that still has to, you know, all day today and then tomorrow's trade too. So you want to keep that in mind. It's a weekly. But if we look at a daily, you know, this is decent on a daily. This thing is, you know, we have these moving averages from when we're looking at the SPOO, right? And so there's still some room to go. In terms of if you want to look at it from that standpoint, but this is this looks like it wants to retrace a significant portion still. Question. You know, it's it may, real quick. You and I talked about this. Do you think this has the lookings of an Elliott wave? Do you think we're in the so fourth first, wave of because so I, I process up last night and we were kind of ho humming about it, and then I did the same thing. You drew it's a the tough one. I mean, the, we broke the through. the problem with that is is that you have retraced a significant portion of this. And also depends on where you have the first wave starting, because if you call this wave three right here, wave yeah. three should be the biggest. If you have this being wave one, what is this? Oh, well, hang on. So if you started, if you started from where it kind of broke out right here, that's 504 up to you can call it where it started to consolidate here. So that's 568. Yep. So what is that? I'm not good at math. 64 cents. So then you have five and a half where it started here up to 636. So that's close. I mean, that's that still isn't like the third wave should be materially bigger than the first. So I don't know if you can call it that by definition, right? Okay. But what sticks out to me is this is this right here. That's a net like you have this, this is an uptrend that's been holding for some time, right? And you and you still have this longer term one here that started. You could say back in November, right? It still hasn't been, you know, what violated. So it's, it's, there's still, this looks like it wants to gap down and potentially go trade down around this moving average. If you could stick this close, this is a weak close. This could be a, a very weak close for D's corn. You think about how like kind of charged up this market was too. I mean, everybody, it was just like, it looked like it was just going to the moon right. and it just kept going here. So I think you could end up have shaking the tree pretty hard still. We have already, but I think there could be more the way this chart's looking. But I think I think we definitely need to be respectful of this kind of behavior, right? Because then if you want to look at it, we looked at it earlier in a monthly. And I think we talked about this last week. Yep. When the last time we looked at the monthly, 
a blow off, a potential for a blow off top once you've basically gone through this whole move, right? We had this long term base we built, it broke out, you measure it from the base, got there, and then it has this blow off top. So, same thing. I mean, monthly, if you close inside this body of this candle and then open the next month lower, that's a real that's a real sign of weakness. Okay. So on, on the weekly, we're going to know by tomorrow kind of where we're settling, but by on the monthly, we're going to be able to test this theory out and look, I mean, kind of next week and, and see where we're at with that, yeah. Yeah. With that candle so far. Yeah, this is this is some pretty important trading sessions here for corn, for sure. For sure. Yeah, it is. It feels like everybody's eyes are kind of on corn and beans right now to, to see yeah. all those play out for the rest of the week. Well, I mean, look at how, you know, you could say milk it certainly has, I feel like milk has been tracking it. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we had, um, you know, we had a pretty solid up day. It wasn't the report day yesterday. It was the previous day in corn, I believe. Right. And, and, you know, milk seemed like as corn was moving higher, milk was kind of following suit and I don't know, maybe it's coincidence, but we're a little bit lower in milk today and, you know, look at where grains are. Yeah. So I, I certainly feel like macroeconomically people are looking at this as a decision criteria, right? It's no longer a market you know, what is this, 2015 to 20, end of 20, or in the 20, in the end of 2019, where you couldn't, you just didn't really do much. Look at this. I mean, it was just yeah. sideways. Yeah. Wild times, man. Wild, wild times, and I'm afraid it's not going to get any uh, easier or any better to predict coming up in the future either. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's half the fun, though. No, oh, exactly. Yeah, very enjoyable. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for another episode of Tech Talk with myself and Mr. Andy Fallman. If you would be so kind, if you have not already, subscribe to the EverAg channel, give us a thumbs up, hit the notification bell, and we have plenty of other videos coming down the pipeline from Basis Loaded to Tech Talk to Matt Gould's forecast to Basis Unloaded with Mitch and Britt on Fridays for everybody to enjoy and hopefully learn a little bit about what we do every day and kind of what we look at. Um, if you have any comments or questions for Mr. Andy or myself, Paige is going to put our contact information in the description, and that is the best way to get a hold of us. And with that, everybody have a great rest of the week, and we will see you next time.